4.3.1 Simple Harmonic Motion. We're going to look at one of the homework problems, the Tarzan problem. Tarzan is swinging back and forth on his grapevine. He swings, and as he goes back and forth across the riverbank, going alternately over land and water, Jane decides to mathematically model his motion and starts her stopwatch. Let T be the number of seconds the stopwatch read and Y be the number of meters Tarzan is from the riverbank. Assume that Y varies sinusoidally with T, and that Y is positive when Tarzan is over the water and negative when he is over land. Jane finds that when t equals 2, Tarzan is at one end of the swing, where y equals negative 23. And when t equals 5, he reaches the other end of the swing, when y equals 17. Sketch a graph of this function, and we want to write a particular equation expressing Tarzan's distance from the riverbank in terms of t. So for this, first we want to look at some given information. We know that the maximum... and the minimum are going to be at 17 and negative 23. So the maximum 17 and the minimum is negative 23. And it told us that at t equals 2 is when we have a minimum. So this would be at time equals 2 seconds. And that means we're over the land. And at time equals 5 seconds, we're over the water. So for this, um, remember that when you're thinking about a swing, so it says that from um, two seconds here to this distance here, we have gone a distance of half of a wavelength. So we need to figure out what the distance is from this end to this end by subtracting five minus two. So that would give us three seconds. But of course, we also have to swing back to make a complete wave. So if three seconds is half a wave, then we can figure out the period of this would be equal to six seconds. From that, we can figure out that our key points on our graph are going to go by six divided by four, because you always take the period and divide it in four equal parts. So six divided by four, we know is equal to 1.5 seconds. And then, of course, we can figure out our amplitude is equal to the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. So in this case, we have 17 minus negative 23 divided by 2, which gives us 20. And our midline was going to be at the maximum plus the minimum divided by 2, which is equal to 17 plus negative 23 divided by 2. So when we do that, we end up with negative 3. And for my graph, then I can go ahead and start to get a sketch of what this might look like. So on my graph, I know I have this 17 meters, which is when we're over here in the um, across over the water. Then we have our midline at negative three meters, and then at negative 23 meters would be when we're on the uh, land. So for this, we know that at time equals two seconds, because we don't know where we're starting on the y-axis, but we do know at time two seconds that Jane noticed that Tarzan was at negative 23 meters. Then, of course, we know that at the next one, five seconds, that Tarzan is at 17. So that would go from a minimum to a maximum. So if we want to figure out what's in between, we could add those together, divide by 2, or we can use our key points to help, which is 1.5 seconds. So 2 plus 1.5 gives us 3.5, or you could do 5 plus 2 divided by 2 and get the 3.5 as well. So we know that would be at our midline right there. And as you can see now, that is half of our wavelength. So if I keep adding those key points, 1.5 seconds, I can get my other key points. So 5 plus 1.5 is 6.5, plus another 1.5 would give us 8. So at 6.5 seconds, we're at negative 3, and at 8, we'd be at negative 23. And you can even check the first wavelength from here to here is one wavelength. So if we take 8 and subtract it from 2, notice we would get our period, which is equal to 6 seconds. And now I can go ahead and answer the second question, which is to write the equation. So for this, it looks like a cosine graph would be easier because we have the max and min. Um, we could also write a sine graph if we want. I'm going to go ahead and write a cosine equation for this. So I'm going to do, and I'm going to use this point down here this time. 
And for that point down there, because it's starting down, I know it's going to be y is equal to, I need a negative because I'd be a flexion across the x-axis. So we need a negative there for our amplitude. So negative 20 times the cosine of, and I need to figure out my b value, which I have not done yet. So recall that your frequency times the new period is equal to 2 pi. So in this case, I know my b value is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, which in this case would be 2 pi divided by 6. And when we reduce that, we get pi over 3 times, and then we have t minus, because time, and we went over to the right 2 from the y-axis, so minus 2 and then our vertical shift is minus 3. So this is one possible equation. Of course, I could have started up here and then had a phase shift of 5, and then my cosine graph would be a plus sign instead in front of the 20. Um, or I could have done a sine graph and use a phase shift of 3.5. So then the next part says we want to answer these questions. Predict when the time is 2.8, 6.3, and 15. So you can use your calculator to help you with that. If you are going to be using your calculator to help you, um, just make sure that your calculator is in um, radians, because if it's not in radians, you would get the question wrong. So in my calculator, I have negative 20 times the cosine of pi divided by 3, and then we're going to use x minus 2, and then minus 3. So I can go to my table if I want to to figure out those values at that time, but notice that we have 2.8, 6.3, 15, so it would be a lot easier to go to my graph and actually change my graph so it looks more like what we did on our paper. So on our paper, remember, we had um, started at 0 for the x's, and we went all the way up to 8. And then for our y's, we had negative 23, so I'm going to do negative 25 to a y maximum of 20, because the maximum for us was 17. So if I hit graph, this is what my wavelength looks like. And now I can figure out, using my calculator, second trace value, and I can do 2.8 enter, and I get negative 16.38 for my answer. Then I can do the same thing, second trace value, and I could do 6.3 enter, and I get 1.1582. And then if I keep going, second trace value 15 would be equal to, and it says invalid because I didn't make my um, window long enough for that. So for my window, if I'm looking at this, Oops. If I go to my window, notice how I only went to 8 for my maximum, so I'd have to actually go to 15 in order to be able to see what that is. So I'm going to do 16 for my graph. So now if I were actually to plug in second trace value 15, enter, now I can see it's at negative 13. Of course you could go to your table for that one because it's not a decimal. So now I have all those values, and the last question says, where was Tarzan when Jane started the stopwatch? So we want to figure out at time zero, where was Tarzan? So if I do this, I would just go to second trace and do the same thing. The value that we're looking for is time zero, so x equals zero is equal to seven. So we know that when Jane started the stopwatch, Tarzan was seven meters from the river bank. Because if we go back to that picture that we have, remember if it's positive, we are over the river, so it just means again, seven meters from the river bank. So I just went ahead and wrote the answers out for each of those um, that we have here. So we had the negative 16.38, 1.16, and negative 13 meters. And then at time zero, um, when Jane started the stopwatch, Tarzan was seven meters from the river bank.